let me down again. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the iPhone. It was announced back in January of 2007 and then released on the 29th of June that same year. It was a revolutionary device that came with a ton of firsts and changed how we use gadgets in general. But there was also a ton of devices and products the iPhone took the place of. Back in 2007, Apple was only really known to creatives thanks to the Mac and to anyone else through the iPod. The iPod and MP3 players in general were big. Everyone had one. And the iPod was actually the product that saved Apple from bankruptcy and introduced the recovering tech company to new customers. This is where more people started to see Apple as cool. Being able to carry hundreds of albums in the palm of your hand and play brick or a music quiz was amazing just 10 years ago. Plus the 5th gen iPod, which you can see here, was only released in 2005, essentially killing off the need for a small device to store photos, videos and music only two years after releasing it. They even called the app for music iPod. Granted, the largest storage capacity was 16 gig at the time, compared to the iPod's 30 and 60 gig capabilities. Before the iPhone, BlackBerry was the device everyone wanted. You could browse the internet, access email, and in its earliest days, tapping out a message on that keyboard caused a stare in public. The iPhone's huge 3.5 inch touchscreen meant it was easily the best phone for browsing the web, answering your emails, and listening to your music. Long before Apple Maps caused issues for many non-independent thinkers, the iPhone launched with Google Maps. Okay, so it didn't have turn-by-turn -turn options for whilst driving, but this was the beginning of the end for many satellite navigation systems and GPS units. If you've already got your phone on you, which has the ability to provide maps, why do you need yet another device to give you directions? These days, unless it's built into your car, nobody really buys them. The first calculator made by Texas Instruments practically cost as much as an iPhone when it was released back in the 1960s. But in 2007, I was on my fourth year of secondary school and I fondly remember the days of going to school with my trusty calculator, spelling words I shouldn't by turning my calculator upside down. And, you know, occasionally using it for math work. But there's an app for that. One which you can instantly bring up a scientific calculator should you be clever enough to know what all the buttons are for. Yep, there's an app for that too. But just 10 years ago, we used dedicated voice recorders to record lectures, keep audio diaries, or just about anything that required an audio record. Though you can still find voice recorders for sale, the iPhone and its stock voice memos app pretty much killed sales on voice recorders. I went trawling around my town centre to find this one, and it turned up in a second-hand shop. Since you're probably the type that checks messages first thing in the morning, you probably rise and shine to your iPhone thanks to its native alarm clock app and its selection of soothing chirps, chimes and other sounds. No more jarring buzz or being startled awake by a frenetic trumpet solo because you set your radio clock to the jazz station. There's even a snooze option. And if your alarm clock was anything like mine, it took a beating and is grateful for its retirement. This is arguably the industry disrupted the most by the iPhone. Once Apple began fine-tuning the quality of its camera, beginning with the iPhone 4S, sales of cameras, particularly point and shoots plummeted as more and more people began to see themselves as creative photographers. The iPhone eliminated the need for technical knowledge. The camera software does all that heavy lifting. The iPhone combined with photo editing apps to easily add style filters and social media platforms like Instagram has changed the way we interact with the world. Many professional photographers are integrating the iPhone into their work and the camera continues to be an iPhone feature with unlimited growth. For the last two years on Flickr, more pictures were taken with an iPhone than Canon or Nikon. Before the iPhones, handheld game consoles were everywhere. Game Boys, Sony PSPs, and of course the Nintendo DS. Okay, so technically the App Store wasn't available until 2008. But with the ability to play mobile games on Safari, and the App Store just round the corner, handheld game consoles began to become less popular. Even to this day, the less common to see on a bus or a train, everyone sits there on their iPhones. Let me know in the comments section down below though, if you think they'll make a resurgence, thanks to products like the Nintendo Switch. You can still find notebooks, address books, and calendars in analog form, but with the iPhone and its many apps, it makes those things seem so quaint. There's the Notes app, the Voice Memos app, and even a quick email to yourself to jot down reminders. The address book is probably closest to extinct thanks to the contacts feature on the iPhone. The iPhone, after all, is a phone, which gives it spaces for two different numbers, email, plus a notes section that could be used to jot down details like Twitter handles. A calendar app or having your phone sync with Google Calendar reminds you of all of your appointments, though if you were just trying to remember that date, your iPhone home screen is good for that. With the iPhone being a great way to surf the web, more and more people began reading their news online. And nowadays, publications are creating mobile apps for readers to catch up on their news. 
Because you can zoom in with a simple thumb and index finger gesture on the iPhone screen, reading a newspaper can be even less strain on the eyes, and trying to focus on nine point type. Apple has also got in the news business with its own app, allowing users to create based on their interests. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments section down below what devices and products your iPhone has replaced since 2007. Also, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button down below and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single video from Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.